Bear County commissioners have approved a contract agreement to begin gathering data from TxDOT and law enforcement crash reports to see which roads have higher fatalities and injury crashes. $300,000 to pay for the study are from the U.S. Department of Transportation Safe Street and Roads for All grant program. The county is going to add another $100,000 themselves. Now, the data gathering is also going to include community input from town hall meetings. We find a hot spot, you know, we, if it's a quick solution, like maybe putting up a street light, uh, if it's been dark out or um, maybe roughing up the pavement, if we're seeing a high incidence of crashes that occur when it's wet, um, those are quick treatments, you know, something longer term like rebuilding an entire roadway, well, that will have to wait for future funds. The process of gathering the data and coming up with a plan will take about a year to 18 months. The county will be will then apply for a separate federal grant to pay for any fixes. So this is a long process. On CaseHead.com, you can see the list of dangerous roads. Some of the commissioners are already keeping an eye on, thanks to the help of you, the constituents. You can see if your road is already on that list. Meanwhile, deadly crashes and roads prone to flooding. Bear County is paying a firm uh, a firm to compile a list of most dangerous roads and unincorporated parts of the county. The list will then be used to come up with a financial plan to make those roads safer. This morning, we're asking you on Facebook to tell us what roads you think should go on the most dangerous list. Mm -hmm. Our Patty Santos tells us it's going to take over a year or so for us to see the official dangerous roads list, but one county commissioner has already been raising the alarm. I already have a list of areas that uh, uh, fatalities have happened. I don't like to get stuck in the paralysis of analysis. I think we need to be acting on expansion of roads, lighting in many of these intersections where there is no lighting, uh, and halt arms where schools and um, seniors are passing. Bear County Commissioner Tommy Calvert represents the eastern part of Bear County, which is growing in population. He says that's brought up road safety concerns that need to be fixed now. The court must move very fast because uh, government is usually about five years behind where the private sector is in terms of ideas. So we operate about 1,500 miles. If you stack all our roads together, it's about 1,500 miles, which is about the same distance from here to Detroit if you were to manage it all. So. County Public Works Director Art Reinhardt says a comprehensive study of all county roads has never been done. The $400,000 study will use law enforcement and tech stock crash reports as well as community input to come up with a list. It will help shape our study. Probably half of the effort will be that engagement. We, we do want to have some sort of online survey as well where people can drop uh, either think pins on a map or provide feedback so we can incorporate in it. We ask commissioners for a list of roads their constituents have identified as dangerous. Calvert pointed to Aztec Lane and Universal City as a flood danger. Railroad crossings at Riddiman and Gibbsbrough Road, another near Congressional Boulevard, block emergency vehicles from crossing. And FM 1518 in Greytown, a deadly flood area. But there are ongoing efforts to make roads safer. These signs, along with the flashing lights warning people about possible flooding ahead, were installed here near St. Hedwig. This happened after two people died when the vehicle that they were in was swept away by flood water. That happened in 2021. Over in Precinct 3, Grant Moody had a list of 10 roads voters are worried about, including FM 3351, Kyle Seal Parkway, and Bernie Stage Road. The official study will take about 18 months to complete. It's, it's a long-term effort. Um, it's, it's a difficult effort, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try.